Now I'll come back home. What you go do for this video today? We go learn about Flexbox. What in Flexbox be? How Flexbox fit help our life for you? By the end of this video today, we now go on understand how Flexbox they work. We now go on see some kind of tricks we say me self. Ah, they use self. They understand this whole thing so that we now no fee ever they confused with CSS Flexbox. Wait to be Flexbox. Flexbox not just modern way web say you could use the right your CSS. And uh, also before you could use all this float left, float right, position absolute, position relatives, all those kind of things, top left, right. You don't need to do all those things with Flexbox. Just put your container and then fire your code. Everything will work for you for there. So Flexbox now. So on web say if you start to the layer all your components, eh? Oh, you go to love the way you go to behave for you. You don't go to stress yourself with many, many things. We say normally you go to stress yourself. The browser itself, where they do the Flexbox calculation, go they do the whole calculation for you. If you want to use Flexbox, if you use Flexbox for Google Chrome, if you use them for Firefox, if you even use them for Edge, Opera, even Safari concept. Why you go need learn Flexbox? You know the stressors when we they write now. Like you know, they do all this position relative, and then if you move something, you go come. They use the position again. They fix, 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 fix. fix. No, you know, go to do that. One. Flexbox don't handle that one for you. So you don't need to learn new syntax, and because you don't need to learn new syntax, that just makes it easier. You could just put in your CSS. It could work just like that. No need to they compile or put any extra APZ on top and say you want to use CSS Flexbox. Just they write your normal CSS. Another thing where you go need no be say you get away with the center something before for CSS. We they use all these position relatives that year. But now with CSS Flexbox, over simple one killer and that itself for here. So if you look this code example we did for here, so you go first need wrap your element on top of parent element, where they call here for here your flexbox container. You go first need to wrap them on top now. Then when you don't call them as the parent component, you go need set them to display flex. Once you do it like that, um, your flexbox don't enter, don't they work? You get some kind of other properties where you say, I just put one amount as CSP. Say if you control even the direction where you want me the flex, they go. If you even say, okay, you want to wrap all the components, so you want to wrap and if you even see set the centering, how you want to make everything center, okay? Now, Flexbox, it they flow, it they flow all the divs, they go, they arrange themselves, all these boxes now the divs, they go, they arrange themselves in this direction, in the main axis direction, that's what they call it. So, just keep that in mind before you start to the learn Flexbox, so, say, from the left to the right, or right to left, now be the main axis by default, okay? Then, if you say, you want to come down from top to bottom, with the color and the cross axis, you know, say, uh, say they come from top to bottom. So they form this cross axis. Because you guys follow the main axis first before you can follow the cross axis. That's how they take the position every time we want. Quick, quick, easy with Flexbox because of this concept of cross axis and the main axis. So as you go down, they hear some people they talk Flexbox and CSS grid. If you do the two together, say, I would just say the most important difference between Flexbox and CSS grid. We say now one dimension. Remember, I say it they always go one direction. Then uh, if you go either like the main axis or just the cross axis, but you could follow just this one direction. You know, they follow two like this. But with CSS grid, now two dimension. If you use the cross axis from top to bottom, or if you use the main axis from left to right. Okay? So, make we enter inside our VS Code, make a show now how to write some CSS flexbox for here. So, so I don't enter inside my VS Code. So, and if you look inside my VS Code, you can see, say, I get these two files. One at the index.html and the other one at the styles.css. So, this index.html make we see what it is inside because it say we already set the head for this our uh, html document and if you look inside here for inside the body you can see say i just get this one div of parents and this div of parents it they hold all the other children so inside these children i just named them from one to number 12 for here now because I don't link the CSS for here, make we enter into the CSS, which is not this file for here. So if we look inside our CSS, I just get some normal styles where we're supposed to use. Uh, this one are just to define my variables where we just use CSS uh, variables. Uh, if you don't know what's in the CSS um, variables, make now go check the video. I'll go drop link for the description for now. This is not just default settings for the margins and for this box sizing. 
and also the padding. Then if you check here, you can see, say, I also get some padding for the body just to arrange them. Um, and of course, we put the phone family we set them to sans serif. And uh, if you check here for the parents and the child, I just select the two of them and they apply a common style to them, which are the border radius of 10 pixels for there. And then for here, what we do, we say, I just style them the way I want to make it look. And then, of course, we just add our variables for here. So we add our variables with the background color. We add the padding of two rem. We add some value to the border. And then we just set the variable for here and now we want me the border b but for here we go start to add our flex box for inside here we go soon get to that side for inside the child class now it's similar to the parent class but we just style them um, they give them um, in color uh and the background a padding a margin also also we they give them um, a width the height and we they give them um, uh you know font font size what we want then we're going to style the child component anyhow we want for here all right make we launch this inside our browser to do that we're going to just come inside if you know they use vs code just come inside here uh, type live server for inside your extension tab for here you will enter live server get live server you will make sure say you download and install this one this one where they call live server by retweak day once you don't install them you're going to need to go back into your project and you'll see this icon go live you'll click on and go start our live server for us so if you look for inside our browser now, you can see say we don't they run our project on top of this port for here. So if you look inside here, just to say this is not just the normal thing we just style where I just showed now. So we get our divs and see as our divs come fresh for here, but all of them get this number from uh, one to uh, number twelve. So now make we start to add our flexbox into RAM. Make we see how flexbox they affect our code for here. So so we could go our code editor. And now, if you look inside here, we get our HTML for here, our CSS for this side. So I already explained, given now for the slide version, say Flexbox, it will work on top, say you go first apply the class on top of the parent elements. Then at this div, in this case now, that the div now be the parent element, and of course, this is not the child element. So we could just come inside here, inside our parent class. You see, we don't put a class of parent for here. We'll come inside our parent class, and for inside our parent class, what you want to say, we want to set the display and we'll set them to flex. Once we set the display to flex like this, this automatically will turn our parent class into flexbox. So it will make them a box with a flexible. All right. So if we go inside the browser, you will see say everything don't set side by side. So this is now what flexbox they do for us. It they help us they make everything they arrange in the main axis i don't have to show now for the slide say the main axis now so flexbox they flow for us by default so we can show now some other properties and when we go back into our vs code what if we go like set the direction of our flexbox if we just say flex direction i'm going to set the flex direction to either column or row so make we press save for here and make we see what's in the happen so if we go back inside the browser you will see say you see they just like before why that are because flexbox by default as you set them it is set in value that's the flexbox it is set the flex direction to row so if we set them for row now you will see say it don't they arrange itself just like we did as we first set them with only flexbox so by default that are how flexbox it work but what if you do we say we even set the row to reverse for here and we press save and we check the preview you can see say we don't they reverse our items inside our flex uh, container so all the children of this parent element that are this gray one here they don't arrange themselves side by side but for reverse order and also if you do the same for the column side so if i change this row now to column and we press save you can see say it starts from 12 all the way to the bottom which now number one so that's how the flex direction they work for us for here so okay now another thing if we do we say you want to wrap all the elements inside this div flexbox get the property where they call flex wrap and flex wrap now where we say we feel they wrap all the elements for our container or we feel they control how in one way the flex container they behave on a single line or for multiple lines so make a show now what's in i mean so if we set the value of the flex wrap to wrap, make we see. Oh, we can go back. Um, I could just oh oh oh. So I I think say I make mistake somewhere. Oh yeah, 
So I miss that brace. So we press save. I move there. All right, cool. So now, if you say, make we check out, make I comment out this one. So now, when we set them to flex wrap, you see, say now all our items don't they wrapped inside this box for here, inside this parent element. They know they arrange like before anymore. Now they don't arrange side by side in this direction. You don't, you don't set everything all fresh for us for here. Simply by using only that flex wrap. Likewise, you can also get this no wrap. And if you say no wrap, it will just behave exactly the same. Make me set down to wrap. And now when we set down to wrap, we get this box of items with the inside here. So make me check whether even they responsive. So if you just right click on top any of them or anywhere for the page, just right click and then click inspect for here. You can see say already the thing not arrange the D for us. So this is say our deep they expand, expand, and everything they always they wrap itself. We don't write any media query, we just write only one property and then you know style our code for us for here. You get the way we feel right all this code where we just write just now now. Say we want set them to wrap and then we want can't do something again. And instead we say we want even wrap them for reverse self. How we feel now? Well, it gets shortcut way also. And that's something about Flexbox. So we go back inside VS Code for here. Then make we say we want comment this flex wrap out. And then make we write the short hand way of doing what we just do right now. So go first say we want set the flex flow. And once set this flex flow to something. So make I just even close this deep for here first. So we're going to see everything we to do. And then make we just say, we want this flex flow now. Make it set reach the row by default. And then when we want make it wrap itself, but we want to wrap in reverse. So if we press it for here and we come back inside our browser, because of our flex flow, where we don't write, we don't they set it, set the tips just like we did before. I'm going to leave them for wrap for here. No need to wrap reverse out. So just like that, we don't they wrap all our items for inside our div. So if you look here, you will see we get this kind of space for here. I don't know if you know they notice this big space for here for the parent element, but we don't get this big space for inside for the left side. So if I expand now, you will see with this, we get this excess big space again. If I expand now, you see we get all this space for here. So how we go take the arrange the things we want? Like how we go take the arrange the items for here? Then now we're gonna use the justify content so justify content it will help us they arrange the content sideways it will help us they arrange them in the main axis whereas align items uh it will help us they arrange the items in the cross axis from top to bottom so make we open our vs code make we see what thing they do for us so if we come inside here and then make we just say for here one we'll just say justify content and if we say justify content, we get different values when we feel set down. If we set the baseline, if we set the center, if we set down the flex start, flex end, anyone we want, make we try them. So when we say we we'll set them to center for here, and if we set them to center, it is say now it they easy to they arrange things for inside Flexbox tool. So it is say now that spacing where they did this side and this side, where they did the left side, or where they did the right side before pass. As the left side, you don't come up for here. So now all the time the elements they go to the data center, they go to the data center. Make we change the property and then make we say we don't want to make a data center even say if you do another value, if you say you want set down for space between, and if you set down to space between, you go always they get space between them. You they see, and because of that, you go to get this kind of space for here when the screen size reach that size. But if you do like this, you go to always they get space between the children elements. So you see how it always they get space between likewise if you say okay you want to set them from space between you want to set, change them to space around if you set them to space around you can see say the way they get space around the elements so if i reduce the screen you can see say now you don't they arrange you don't they get that equal spacing around them you see how space around for this side and for this side so then how for the left and for the right you could always get that spacing you see how for the left and for the right and make me say evenly now if we down for evenly, what evenly they do? They always they find even size. It always they give us that even spaces. So if we say make we reduce the size um, of the screen, so we reduce. It's say they even, it they even, and when you know they even again, it go do its best to break down into a smaller screen for us. But yes, sometimes I get the way I always they forget all these things, and the dev tool they very very helpful. So if you use the dev tool now and uh, that this console for here. 
and we say okay so what did i like to say you go first go the parent element where we set so make we find out for inside our dev tool google chrome do i did they help us they detect say now flexbox where we they use for here so if you look for inside here inside our styles here for our css you go see say we get this flex display flex as we set that flex we get this box for here so if we click this box it will open everything what you can do with our flexbox for here so if you they use here the experiment, if you they set the wrap, or if you they set the no wrap. So if you say you want to justify the content, I want put down for the center. If you say you want put down for the starting side, flex start, flex end. If you say sp um, space between, if you say space around, and if you say space evenly, which is not what we will just do for our code. So it go make sense, make it use all these things to the arrange your values for here or to the work with CSS. Flexbox for here. So if we come back into our VS Code, maybe we put a height on top of the parent element just so that we could feel the work with that height. So first, make I just come up here and then make we just assign a height. And I'm going to set the height to make I say 80 rem. This is going to just make sure, say, our elements, they, well, you know, they get this space, this height amongst them, and Flexbox see they work the same. So we could just come here back into our code. And for inside the parent element, still you want to do align dash items, and this will help us align all the items. So if you say okay, you want to align the items to the flex start, and this will help us align all the items to the top. Remember, say I tell you and I say the alignment now for the cross axis, then a top to bottom by default. So make we go back into our um, example for the browser. I go to say now it did the top. You see, say now we get this small space for here, but we get this big space for here. So make we use our dev to make we try experiments with them, and then go come here and you go see say for this aligned items it did to start by default. So if we say make we drop them to the middle or to the bottom, you go see say we put them for flex end. It comes to the end of the page, and if you look here, you can see say we get that space for up here. If you set them to center. It go date the center so you just say it is always a set for the center for you so make we live on like that and i like on that way now how we they work with the flex container for flexbox so what if we want to arrange all these numbers and we want to put them for inside the center of the box all the time how we go do it? simple make we just go inside our vs code so make we set the justify content to center and align item to center so we say justify content center and then we will set the align items to center. So we will set the display, sorry, to flex. And just like that, it will arrange all our text. Put them for the center of that box all the time. So we could check. So if we open our browser, you will see say all the text don't come inside here. So we could just go back inside our VS Code. And then we add a new class. So I want to create a new class. Make I collapse this one. And then we could just call this new class, say, we want to call this class grow. So we just say, we want a class of grow. And this is not just ordinary class. If you call them monkey, goat, cow, it no matter. So you could just come here. You have to say, okay, for inside this class now, what do you want to say? You want to first add the flex dash grow. And this flex grow, they make sure say something, they grow where we. So if you give them a number value of one, anywhere where we add this flex, this grow class, this flex grow property, it go kick into them. So make we add some color so that we could just know say, okay, oh, now this be what they work with. So I could just add a background color. Make we use our CSS variables, I will say var. And then we could just pick any of the colors for here. So make we just say, make we choose the color black for here. So make we enter inside our HTML. And then make we add that class to any of these elements where they inside this parent element. Make we see what's going to happen. So make we come number three. I'm going to just set grow for here so just by adding that one class for there we go get our flex grow property make we add them for a few other places uh six make it grow number 10. so we press save we're supposed to get number three six and ten where they go they behave like flex grow they go the big pass so make we see how flex grow they behave you can see say now the properties they don't white so anyhow where i make the screen white now now it could be if i make them smaller it could be shrink it could be grow it could be grow it could be grow but what if i can't make them small pass did they see as they behave so if we start to increase that or reduce the screen reduce the screen so you see flexbox they handle all these things for us for here so so we could add another class we could see waiting again if you do and for inside our VS Code, make you scroll down, make we add another class for you. It go do very similar to grow, so make we just scroll down and say we will define this class. We will define now the class of shrink. 
And this class of shrink, whenever we add this class of shrink, we want to do something. We want to say flex shrink. And this flex shrink, what we want to be saying, we want to set the value of what we want to shrink. So anytime we set the flex shrink, maybe we just say we want the value be zero. Maybe we say in no fee ever shrink. Okay, so I can duplicate this one. And then we can paste down in here. Make I just change the color accent for him. Um, make we go back inside HTML. Make we assign those classes to something. So if you just give this number one a class of shrink, make we see say our number one is you not know a shrink. So make we go inside here, and then we go to the number one. And they see say the number one it don't grow for here. So make we increase them because they say it no go ever big past that size. But instead, you know go feel reduce them as this size so no matter how small the screen be it will always carry that size every time you know go the big past that size all right so then i'm waiting our shrink they help us they do for this so so make we say we want not add grow and shrink for the same element make we see how it go behave so if we come here and we say we want okay make we say we want grow so make we add grow for here so we want the class of grow and we want the class of shrink on top the same number one lm div or element we will get for here when we go back inside our browser so now it is to say this number one it don't the big go it don't they grow it don't they grow and then if we reduce up uh, so it behave like a flex grow it started to behave like flex grow if we reduce up uh, then it kicks in it will come start to behave like a flex shrink property so it's a no condition kicking. so if you add grow and shrink on top one class and it will behave exactly the same for you for them make we go back into our vs code and make you see which other property we will add for here so make we say we want to do the flex basis let's scroll down small and make we just say we want a class of flex basis by the way we don't need to write down for classes for me i just did do them so that on go fit understand what these properties they do so we'll just say basis and this basis class we could just give them the value of flex dash basis and then this flex basis it expect a property well flex basis not just the way we want to make the initial value they behave so if we say we want to make it be like 25 rem and make we give them a color and then make we change the color for here maybe we have color white make we change the text color to black and the text uh, background will be white for there and then if anytime we apply this flex basis class it's going to give us this flex basis make we go inside our index or html make we add them um, inside number eight instead so it go there different so we could just say we want the basis make we change that background color so that we could see what we do where we i could just call them dark blue for here and if i don't like this you can see that we get this dark blue for here make i change this color to white and if not white for there you can see say we get this blue so now what we get we say we get this initial state you see say this one don't they behave different this number eight don't they behave different so if i start to the reduce them you can see say all the time it they always they stay as this size so if i do reduce them the basis size and then it starts to the reduce okay so as we don't add this one for here so make we talk say we just want to see how we feel bring everything together Luckily for us, Flexbox already give us something where they call the flex. We could just call them flex. So make we see how they work for here. We could just come here. Make we create a new class of flex. And this class of flex, make we just say now flex. At the first parameter, we're supposed to write now the flex grow. Also remember, say we first set our grow for here to one. So that now why I can't use flex grow for here so the second argument or the second parameter we want pass the second value now zero meaning say now the shrink we want remember say we don't shrink come for here so we talk say okay we want flex shrink then make we say okay we still want even put this our flex basis then at this flex basis of 25 rem make we try do that one for here so make we come here and then make we say we get 25 rem so this one now as we don't write down like this, what if we don't do we say we don't say okay, oh, make it be flex basis 25 rem than at this first one. I could start from here, then make it be flex shrink zero than at this one for here, then make it be flex grow one. So all the behaviors we will do see for here, for here, for here, now apart for inside here, so like this. So so as it like this. Make I just say, all right, make we give them a background color. We could change the color. So I'll set them to light color for here. And then make we add that class of flex on top one of these 
element. I'll make we select number 12. So we could just say flex for here. And once we put that class of flex and press save, we could go back inside our browser. So it is to say now, this one for here, this number 12, you don't grow, spread, reach everything for here. Make I use this one small. Just to say now, nah, it don't grow, it don't spread, give everyone for here. And then it go to shrink. See how they behave. It they grow, it they grow, it they grow. Boom, it don't grow. You see how? Huh? It can't shrink, it can't shrink. But even though we they shrink out, huh? and we don't set the initial value before, we go see shrinker, they go say, okay, we'll make you no share as to us small pass all the other ones. Make we see. And if we scroll to the bottom, you can see it's still full for gram for this. So, so that now how it they behave for here once we they use all that shortcut with the flex and with all those properties. So if they say how if they say how say it don't spread rich here, then are the size or the initial value where we set for there. So if we come inside here, we can go into our CSS, make we add a new class. What we call this class self so we're going to say we want to align something of course another idea understand between the aligning and the justification or justify then i want to say now the main or the cross axis remember so because of that we can say we want to align the items to the center oh sorry i say align item i mean align self and then make we give that self make we give them a color so make we say just like before make we give them color so we'll go feel just we identify them um, and then make we change the color to make we say yellow for here. And as we don't set down to yellow, make we apply that this class for somewhere. Make we put down for inside this number five for here. So we'll say self. Make we go increase the size. We'll increase the height. So make we increase the height of our element again. Make we release this, this stuff for there. And then make we go back into our browser. Make we test them. And then this is say because of the height where we don't set this number five don't they behave differently it don't become the center of this container if this video really really help you then make a like down make a share this video and of course i go soon now for the next video so